I know, but they usually stretch them out longer. Mr. Cook said from the Lucian Congregational singing, and I, I said that was short, and Justin said, well, you told them to sing two, and I said, well, that's true, but sometimes our two last 30 minutes, you know, it's a, we sing the same one 15 minutes, as as everybody's getting in with it, but but it is good to see everybody tonight. And I'm sorry to get, get around and shake everybody's hand, but we do appreciate you being here tonight. Hope you feel welcome, but we're going to ask the singing cooks to come on and obey the Lord. Through the fields 
the ones that have gone on before us. Most of all, we're going to see Jesus. He made me a million men wearing clothes beyond Oh 
risen. And you know, that old tomb is empty now. Preacher's talking about getting ready to go over and into the Holy Lands. He's going to get to see a lot of that and see where Jesus was at and where he lived on his own earth. And uh, that's going to be a great experience to get to do that. Amen. But you know, when that old stone was rolled away and he came forth was a great thing. Amen. Went back to be with the Father. Amen. But what I like even more, he's coming back. Together right. all of us up and take us up there with you. He is risen.
gave old Stephen a standing ovation. That's right. Told him to come on home. <laughs> Praise God. He rose and he over the top. He rose and he over the clouds of life.
and you're out there that would just be crying because we're going into that place where we say so happy. But listen, said God Himself. Come on, Phil. God himself he's going to reach over and he's going to wipe all the tears you never have to cry anymore honey. I cry about, but we never have to cry again because tears are not welcome on the streets of glory so they'll not be there my goodness hit it honey
having a wonderful time. Tonight. I've got so many already over there waiting. I'll have a home coming, that's for sure. Because they're waiting now over there. Wonder how many here tonight, this is your first time seeing us singing cooks in person to see your hand. Oh, yes, sir. Huh? Praise God. Yeah, we're glad you're here, honey. But I'm going to ask Ronnie if he'll introduce the group. Yeah. And you'll know who I am. <laughs> I'll start with this beautiful lady right here. We're real proud of her. And like she told you, she's been singing gospel music uh, for 60 years. And uh, she was voted in as a living legend in Southern Gospel Music at the Diamond Awards. This is my mom, Jeanette. Would you make the list? Playing bass guitar, driving the bus. Make sure all this sound equipment works. My brother, James. Thank you. I go on the drums. He keeps the bus washed and clean. He'll be singing some songs for you in a few minutes. And his name's Donnie, and I'm Ronnie. That makes up the cooks from Churchill, Tennessee. I'm going to let my boys come on now. <clears throat> and these boys, my husband, he left four years ago. And it left a hole in this group that will never be filled. But my boys, he would always told me before he left, he said, honey, anything ever happens to me, he said, you take the boys and go on. And that's what I've done. And God surely has blessed us. These boys are so good to mom. They watch over uh, me like I was a little chicken or something. You know? they, they like to watch over me. And, uh, but if you'll give them a great big hand. I say a great big hand. The good brothers. Amen. Give mom another big hand. Yeah. The song says, all my hope is in Jesus. Amen. That's what it needs to be in. Yeah. I've been healed by the Savior. i feel by from above. I've been down to the river.
you been washed by the blood. That's the only way you're going to make me dead to him. Amen. He said, you must be born again. No matter how good you are or whatever, that ain't going to get you there. Amen. Right. Amen. Once you listen to this song, says he got up. Ain't you glad he got up? Yeah. Made that way for us when there was no hope. Give the Lord a big old hand. Oh 
God loved you so much. That's what he done. Gave his only begotten son. To make that way just for you here tonight. Listen to this song. Hope it will bless your heart. says. You know the time is. God's good. Good all the time. You know what feels good when you lay down at night? You know you should leave this whole world. You know you're going to be He counts the stars one and all. Knows how much sand is on the shores. Sees every spiral that falls. He made the mountains and He's in control of everything, of all creatures great and small. He knows my name, every step that I take. Oh, his life. 
streets, as it, it says they're pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. And it talks about walls of jasper and gates of pearl and a tree of life and a river of life and all these things. But that will pale in comparison to getting to fall at the feet of our Lord and our Savior to get down and worship Him for what He's done for us. That's going to be amazing. But you know there's the other side of that coin. Because a lot of times preachers, they'll get up and they'll say, well, make him Lord of your life. You have no, you have no say so in the matter. He is Lord of your life. You have a say about whether or not you accept him Amen. this side of eternity. On, but he is Lord. The Bible says every knee is going to bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He said all power is given to me in heaven and earth. He holds all power. He holds the power tonight to set you free. He opens the roll of Isaiah and he begins to quote, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And right now we're in that acceptable year of the Lord. But you can spend your whole life saying there is no God or saying some other time. And you can leave this world, but I promise you this, one second into eternity, your knee is going to bow and your tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. They were singing about that, about what that's going to be to see him. But the other side of that coin, what's it going to be if your name is not written in that book? Amen. The Bible says the time will come Whenever he comes down, it says the kings of the earth and the mighty men and the rich men, they're going to run to the mountains and rocks and cry for them to fall on them. They said to hide us from the face of him that sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Yes. We got the world is so concerned, like, like the brother said, people scared to death of COVID. My God's a sovereign God and I believe in divine healing. But they're also afraid of what Putin is going to do. Let me tell you something. Putin's knee is going to bow. Amen. And all the dictators of this world, their knee is going to bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. But you know what we better be more worried about is what he's got to say about it. Because if you see him and your name is not in that book, it's going to be a terrible thing. There is a judgment seat that each and every person will have to stand. Now the Christians will face the beam of judgment where we'll receive the rewards of this life. But you know there's all those whose name is not in that book. It talks about a great white throne judgment seat. And it says that I saw the dead small and great stand before God. I saw the books open. And another book was opened which is the book of life. And whosoever's name was not found written in that book was cast into the lake of fire. Yes. They were singing that song about what it's going to be. You may have a, a, all this and you may have everything the world wants, but it says, but if the blood is not applied, then in hell you'll lift your eyes. And I'm glad they sing that. I'm glad that, that they tell you that there is another, there's an alternative. Yes, we, get, we could go to heaven, but if you're here tonight and you examine yourself and it's not my place to judge anybody, we're not here to judge. All we're doing is asking you a simple question. Is your name in that book? Yes. And if you don't know for sure, if you say, Preacher, I'm not sure, you need to know for sure. Amen. This is one thing you need to know beyond the shadow of a doubt about. Yeah. You need to know if your name's in that book or not. Amen. If your name is not in that book, that judgment seat that is there now has the blood applied from Calvary. Yeah. And when that blood was applied, it's a mercy seat. And right now, it's a mercy seat for whosoever will. Let them come and drink of the waters of life freely. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Should not perish, but have everlasting life. You know that word perish means to come to nothing or to be a waste? I don't want my life when it's all said and done to have been a waste. And when, he, when Jesus spoke about Judas Iscariot, he said it would have been better for the man to have never been born. Yeah. But we don't have to. See, we, we, we've got hope. Every person that's in here tonight, there is hope and there's help for you. And by faith, I can assure you that God will save you. Amen. And I've said that plenty of times. She's talking about a lot, of, a lot of people would like to stone the preachers. Maybe one of you all said that about wanting to stone the pastors and preachers. And there are a lot of them like to shut you up. I'll tell you how you can do it. 
I'll never preach again if you can tell me that God will deal with somebody and you can prove that, that if he deals with you, he won't save you. I'll never preach again. Because I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that God will save anybody, anybody. He'll save you. You say, how do you know? Because if you knew where I was at and you knew what he'd done for me and he saved me, then he could save anybody. And if you're in here tonight and you, do, and you don't know the Lord, and you feel him dealing with you because I know convictions here. The Bible says there was a certain uh, man that had two sons. And one went, he wanted his inheritance. And the Bible says he took it and went into a far country. And there he wasted it on riotous living. Wasted it on harlots. Wasted it on wine. Wasted it on everything that the world had. But the Bible says the day come when he was in a hog pen. And it says that he would have fain to have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man would give to him. But he made up his mind, he said, I will arise and go to my father. Amen. You may be sitting here tonight, and, that, and in your mind, you think, I need to do something. I know I need to do something. I know I'm not happy where I'm at. I mean, man, you can't wallow around in the hog pen of life and be happy with it. Am I talking to anybody? Amen. But he said, I will arise and go to my father. And I love what it says. It says, and he arose. A lot of people have good intentions. They think someday, someday I'm going to make things right with God. Well, what about if today's the last opportunity? That conviction that we feel right now, what if it's the last time God deals with you? I've heard him before say, preacher, I wish you'd leave me alone. Let me promise you one of these days I will. We'll give our last altar call. The conviction of God will deal with you for the last time. He'll draw you one last time so you can't get saved when you want to. You get saved when he draws you. Amen. He said, my father draw you. But if he's drawing you now, and you say, I wish you'd leave me alone one of these days, we will. One of these days, they'll deal with you, or God will deal with you for the last time, and it'll be too late. Yes. But today is the day of salvation, and now is accepted time. They were saying, if I don't make it, it'll be nobody's fault but mine. I'm reminded in the book of Acts, I'm getting ready to get them to come back and, and obey the Lord. But that whenever the Bible says there was two men in the book of Acts, one of them was Felix. And Felix, the Bible said, when the apostle Paul began to preach to him, the Bible says that he trembled. And as, as Paul reasoned of righteousness, temperance, and judgment to come, Felix trembled. But you know what he said? The same thing there's probably somebody in here saying tonight. When it's a convenient season, I'll call for you. The devil is always, his favorite word is tomorrow. Get saved tomorrow. Some of the time, this is a singing tonight. You know what would make this, uh, this would make this a night for them is to see somebody get saved. And I'm going to just go ahead and say it because I'm doubling over. They was already two before church. Give their heart to the Lord. And I, man, I am so excited. Look back here. Two people give their heart to the Lord tonight. Well, then you can feel the glory and the presence of God coming in that fellowship hall. Two people already give their heart to the Lord. Well, that same heart, that same uh, art door still stands open. That mercy is still there for you. And if you don't know the Lord, He is still. He is saying, come unto me. I'll give that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn to think my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. He's here tonight. Felix said, when it's convenient. Let me promise you, you'll never find a more convenient time than right now. Amen. These altars are open. And if he's dealing with you, they've been open and they never closed. We've never put a closed sign on these altars yet. These altars are open for anybody who wants to come to him. And Felix said, when it's convenient, I'll call for you. I've read that book uh, several times. And I've never saw where Felix ever come back and That's says, right. now it's convenient. That's right. Because if you let the devil keep telling you, well, some other day, some other time, maybe tomorrow, after all, y'all got church tomorrow night, you may not, he may not deal with you tomorrow, right. and you may be already facing your eternal reward by tomorrow. Amen. Today's the day of salvation. Amen. Now is the accepted time. Amen. If you can hear his voice, harden not your heart. Yeah. I give this plenty of time this illustration. We pour concrete all the time. 
You can put what we call plasticizer in it and you can make it so wet and so runny that it runs like water. But if you let it sit very long, the longer it sits, the harder it gets. And before long, you can't take a jackhammer hardly and bust it up. You keep, let, you keep letting the devil harden your heart. You keep saying it's a convenient time. You say, I didn't come for this. I come to, to hear singing. And we've been hearing some wonderful singing. But listen, while they've been singing, the conviction has been coming down. I can't help but how God wants to work. He can send conviction through singing, can he? Because I feel conviction in this place. You be part of your heart. And one of these days it'll get so hard that you'll sit in church and you'll feel nothing. And the conviction will come and the anointing. And man, we've got anointed singers here tonight. We've always got anointed singers. Though our singers are anointed, these singers are anointed. We're all just workers together. And the anointing of God is here. But, it, but you can sit under anointed singing and anointed preaching and still do nothing about it. Amen. Felix said when it's convenient, I'll call for you. And King Agrippa, I think it was two chapters later when, it, when Paul began to preach to Agrippa. Agrippa listened to him and Paul pleaded in his, I mean, in exasperation. He said, Agrippa, surely you believe the prophets. That's how I feel tonight. Everybody sitting in here, you wouldn't have come to hear gospel singing if you didn't believe that Bible. Surely you believe the Bible. Surely you believe the word of God. And Agrippa didn't say, I don't believe it. Agrippa said, you almost persuaded me to be a Christian. And Paul said, I don't want you almost, but I want you all together such as I am. Amen. Let me tell you, this is the best life that you ever know anything about. Amen. I never know what it was like to live. For 27 years, I was dead in trespasses and sins, and I didn't know what true life was. But 13 years ago, in a, here at this church, as they began to sing, let the worshipers arise. I stood up that night, I said, I, I mean, in my mind, I thought I don't know theology. I don't know anything about church. I don't know anything about Pentecostalism. I don't know anything about anything. But I know whoever you are, you're worthy to be worshipped. And I stood up that night and I raised my hands. And that probably, to everybody that knows me, probably looked like the oddest thing ever was. But I raised my hands that night. And the moment I did, something began to go right through the soles of my feet, run up my legs and touch my heart. Why? Because for the first time in my life, I wasn't almost persuaded. I was fully persuaded. And I'm asking you, please, if you're on the fence with this thing, get off that fence right now. Choose you this day whom you'll serve. I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. You've got the choice tonight. You have got a free will to where you can choose. And he sets it before you. Joshua said, choose who you'll serve. Choose you this day. And today is the day. Amen. So we'll ask them to come back and sing. But listen, these altars are open. If you feel God dealing with you, I beg you, please. I promise you it will not be out of order because this is, this is what we live for. Amen. We live to see somebody give their heart to the Lord. Amen. And if he is dealing with you, I beg you, please come up here. I'll pray with you. And not only will I pray with you, you'll find 50 Lake Fork members that will gather right around you wanting to see you get some help. Amen. 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 If he's dealing with you, please consider him today. That's some good preaching, brother. Amen. Yeah, he can just keep on with it. I like good preaching. It's wonderful. And you're here tonight, and you don't know my Jesus. He's the best friend that you'll ever have. He'll go with you when no one else will. You go all the way. All the way. Amen. As they've already said, you never know when death will come on. We could leave here tonight. And I'm glad that I'm ready to go. Amen. It feels good at night when you can lay down in your bed and know if you never wake up, you be in that beautiful city of God. Amen. When my way 
Jesus told his disciples of things to come. He would be persecuted.
been born again, and I know a lot of y'all hear that. You've been born again. Amen. I like being a little crazy for the Lord. Amen. anniversary that has 40 songs on it, songs from 1962 when they started, 
the 2012, the 50th yeah. anniversary. They've not been re-recorded, so you'll hear how it started as a duet back then, how it changed through the years. Then we have a greatest hits, the Mama Dad, uh, that has 17 the most popular songs through the years. Now we do take credit cards, debit cards, personal checks, cash chicken is a fresh egg, but chickens have to be fried. And uh, they're 15 each, we sell three of them for 40. So Y'all stop by and see us. Appreciate all of you coming out. The church group did a super job singing. I really enjoyed them. And uh, everybody just made us feel welcome here. You know, you don't get that everywhere we go. But uh, it's been a great church. We appreciate everybody. And God bless y'all. We get, hope we get to come back again sometime. We love you. God bless you.